us. I want to bring in Krish Omara Vignaraja. She's the president and CEO of Lutheran Immigration and Refugee Services. All right. I mean, this announcement came down. The administration got absolutely slammed by advocates. They then walked it back. Your reaction both to the initial announcement and to the walk back, Krish? Yeah, um, I experienced a little bit of a whiplash. Uh, as Eugene said, we were one of those faith-based organizations that did reach out. What the administration did yesterday was they provided immediate relief by removing the restrictions that the Trump administration had imposed, which was disproportionately affecting uh, refugees coming from African and Muslim majority nations. And that was helpful. What they didn't do was increase the level of refugee admissions to be commensurate with the need. Um, today, we face the world's greatest refugee crisis. And the idea of keeping the current 15,000 cap that was set during the Trump era, I think is deeply troubling. Um, we are happy that we have heard from President Biden, even in the clip that you just played, that they will revisit this number. But the truth is that we're halfway through the fiscal year and we've only resettled 2,000 refugees so far. I I want to set the stakes for our audience because I think it's really easy to get sort of lost in the technocratic piece of this. And we are both talking about people's lives and we're talking about our identity as a nation. And Adam Sewer at The Atlantic captured this better than I possibly could. He wrote, restoring the soul of the nation cannot mean simply unseating Trump. It also has to mean reversing the policies his administration put in place in an attempt to codify into law his racial and sectarian conception of American citizenship. This seems especially relevant right now, given the conversation that we're having about the Anglo-Saxon caucus potentially, you know, percolating in Congress. What are the stakes here, Krish? I mean, both for the lives of these refugees, but for who we are as a country. Yeah, I mean, I will tell you that resettling refugees historically has been a bipartisan issue that has gotten support from both sides of the aisles. And the reason why is because this program protects children conscripted by militaries. It protects uh, members of the LGBTQ community who are persecuted simply for who they love. It protects the religiously persecuted for who they pr for who, for the God they pray to. Um, this program has accepted, on average, 95,000 refugees, and at a time of a global need that is unprecedented, 80 million across the world. This program is needed now more than ever. I know there had been some suggestions that we could only address the southern border or help refugees. But the truth is, we need to do both. For President Biden to meet his promise of restoring the soul of our nation, I know that we can both walk and chew gum. This country has always been able to help the most vulnerable, whether they are arriving at the southern border or around the world.